Okay, so before I uh, get into the sculpt here, like fleshing out the armature, I just want to talk to you just about a few um, products that are out there that I like to use. Now, there's dozens of uh, sculpting mediums, a hundred, you know, probably over a hundred, really, when you think about it, like depending on whatever it is. Okay, so uh, I've had a fair bit of experience with Sculpey and commercial products for mold making and other clays and so on and lost wax and la da da la da da right but I'm just talking about the general hobbyist you know what's available there's other um, epoxy putties like I've used this before like the milliput super fine you can do incredible work with this but you got to make sure you mix it just right exactly like 50 50 like it's close like it's really particular because if you don't uh, you never get a full cure and that can be a problem, especially on your favorite <laughs> sculpture, right? But if you want to make small parts, like uh, one time I uh, did a, a large, larger grizzly sculpture many years back, and I used this for the claws. It was a larger scale. It was a big bust and uh, with the upper arms and paws. And I used this over wire for the claws because the claws were fairly large. So this, like, the, like. Like they won't break like that easily anyway. So epoxy is really good. You can do fine detail. You can do, it's really solid, stronger than Sculpey for sure by far. Um, and you can do really good work, but you got to stay with it though. You got to stay with the procedure at the time that you're sculpting. So if you're using like an epoxy, like a two part with a hardener, uh, maybe you're just going to work one arm or something or whatever or you're just going to bulk it out first and then walk away and let it dry so but if you do walk away and you're in the middle of something like and it hardens then you're hooped right like you got to deal with it so but it's great stuff and there are other versions of it as well that I'm not going to mention right now because it's just too much to talk about but um, I'll just mention this briefly FEMO like I don't use this much but it is good for doing small little details like uh, um, it's an oven baked as well like if you're doing little like uh, like a spread of food miniature food on a table you get all the different colors you can do it and you can paint it um, it's very similar to the Sculpey uh, in terms of texture um, it's really uh, just one and the same sort of really uh, at the end of the day but I'm just familiar with Sculpey, so I tend to go with the Sculpey. Now, the Super Sculpey is, uh, I find, is pretty good stuff, but it doesn't have the fine texture that the Sculpey 3 does, which I'll talk to you in a second. Um, you know, it, it comes in a large box like this, and you have to knead it. Like, it's fairly hard. So, if you are maybe have don't have the hands, maybe, strength, like most modelers do. Like, you'll notice about your hands, too. Like, if you ever get out of modeling, you know, like, for couple of years and you get back in it usually your hands will cramp up because like your hands actually get in shape you know when you model like they're actually like little bodies right and uh, when you so if you got good strong hands then this particular product uh, is no problem but it is a bit stiff but it does soften up pretty easily at room temp and when you need it okay but I'm not going to use that for this one because uh, I like to use this for larger projects okay uh, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the Sculpey 3. It's the same material that um, that I used to do the HL Scale Mousse. And I really like this because it is oven baked. So I can sculpt with this and leave it. Like I can walk away, right? Go to work or go take a break, whatever. And I can come back and it's still soft and it holds its shape well. And it actually... Um, it has a really, really fine texture to it. Uh, that I like and it's soft much softer than even the super Sculpey uh, which is this is a called Sculpey 3 okay so if you want a softer material with a finer texture then then I recommend this for the oven baked stuff okay I want to talk to you about doing this sculpt, how important it is to do a skeletal structure. I'm going to do it out of brass and copper wire, okay? So a couple of different diameters of copper wire. In this case, I got 20 gauge and then some 
uh, 24 gauge and then there's a brass uh, solid brass rod this is uh, how big is this this is three mil I think or two mil yeah or no actually it's one point yeah two mil and we use this for his main spine like his neck and then his main spine to the hip and then I'm gonna do the legs out of this other copper and solder these joints like you'll see how I do it I'm gonna wind up I'm gonna build up the rib cage too with copper and that way when you get a good skeletal form going it always helps the scalp a great deal because you get your proportions right okay let's have a look at the frame here so we can see the anatomy of the bear here the skeleton so I'm building up a brass skeletal armature and you can see the spine, the hip, the pelvis there, right here. I'll add a piece for the tail and where the skull is going to be, the head. I decided I would just build that right onto the frame. I was going to build a separate head but I'm not going to bother in this case because I'm going to pose this uh, bear pretty much to where I want him before I start to sculpt. So notice how I used Okay, so I want to use this main rod for the mount where he's going to be planted, okay? This leg will be on the left, but in this picture it's on the right, but I'm just reversing the posture because I want this leg stepping on face, facing this way. You know, I just want to mention at this point, if you look at a, uh, at a skeletal structure of a bear and a human, they're just like freakishly similar, right? Like even their hands and their feet. Like look at the feet here. See that? They're just like a human. With the heel and stuff. And they really are. Like they're just in, like it's quite stunning, actually. If you're ever to see a bear on a hanging hook, like skinned, my goodness, it's frightening almost to how <laughs> human like they look. Okay, see how I hammered that down a bit on the anvil flat? Right. The reason why I don't want to file that is because I want the like I don't want to lose the bulk. I want to flare it out. See, if you file it down, you lose the strength. Even though it's pretty strong already, so now I can just tweak it with a file and then just squeeze that on nice, clamp that in place, and then uh, just position that nicely, and then I can get a nice solder. Okay. Okay, so you can see the basic armature is built now, and you can see how solid it is, right? So this one solid uh, two millimeter brass rod goes right through the back and right up to the tip of the nose, okay? And the rest are flattened and soldered. And then I use some copper to build up a bit of a rib cage. So you can see, I've already started changing his posture from this particular one, but I built this armature up from these dimensions. And then I just started, uh, before I did all the back work and the rib that would really stiffen that, I changed his posture because I want him more upright going up a hill. I can tweak his neck more and so on, but, uh, so he's pretty much ready for uh, super sculpt and uh, pretty happy with a nice sturdy sculpture. Should make for a nice little model. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to start applying some of this Sculpey 3. And all I'm going to do is I'm going to build up about a quarter inch or so onto the armature just with my thumbs and hands. And what I want to do is, is just get just a, a basic underlying 
bulking up going here and then I'm just going to bake it off in the oven at about 250. It calls for 275 but I, I usually go 250 because at 275 at 15 minutes sometimes you can overcook the scalpy. You don't really want to do that but you know what it's very forgiving uh, if you do it's it's not the end of the road for you. <laughs> it uh, just goes really dark uh, like so you know and the nice thing is too is in 15 minutes it's ready to go again right. Like you don't have to wait and like I say, you can adhere this, especially the Sculpey 3, to a cooked off piece. You can take some of the fresh and then it sticks just fantastic. That's one thing you're not going to get with uh, with other products that I notice. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. Other sculptors like to use uh, sort of epoxy based um, products and I understand why. Uh, without going into all the finer details of that but uh, after a while when you're adding to like an epoxy or two part like uh, the you know the parts that you want to you know add won't stick like there's a point where it doesn't stick anymore um, you know I've heard of people saying oh they use a little bit of CA yeah you can do that in a pinch but why would you want to introduce CA to epoxy like a chemical bond to a mechanical I, I try to stay away from mixing medias that way it it affects the integrity of the sculpture I think in the long run but um, so you know pick your poison right like if you want to use epoxy that's great but you got to work faster though uh, if you do so it depends on your confidence level and your experience and uh, and it depends on the subject matter as well but I like to do it this way because you can keep baking off. Like I said before, you can add, bake, add, bake, add, bake. I try to get it down to three or four bakes and then maybe a final if I can. But um, like I say, it's up to the individual sculptor or modeler and how they want to go about that. Okay, so she's out of the oven. It's the first bake off, and you can see um, I mean how hard it is. I can't run the knife into it, but I can score this easier than epoxy putty, and I can also carve it too. I can actually take slices off it and sand it, which is a nice feature with uh, Super Sculpey. Um, I like to use epoxy putty for uh, just I should mention this at this stage like I'll probably use epoxy putty maybe we'll see when I do the paws like I do them last the claws and the paws like the really fine details that are going to take hits and be subject to more abuse uh, I won't be doing it out of super sculpey because super sculpey on the micro really micro kind of details it'll just, just it'll break off unless you impregnate it with a wire. So, um, and like possibly, like I can get away with pretty much doing the whole face, eyes, everything with Super Sculpey, but we'll see when I get there. And then we'll also see with the nose and those features. Of course, there'll be a, a salmon in his mouth or a large trout, so I haven't decided on that yet. Um, but yeah, just for bulking up and actually doing a lot of the hair detail, I'm going to use Super Sculpey as well, like the fur. Uh, when it comes to doing the bottom pads of the feet, uh, I might use epoxy putty because again, it's really robust and tough, and you can and it you can sculpt really nice details with it as well. Uh, you know, I'm open to other types of putty if it's available, but I have what I have in my workshop and uh, now, and uh, I'm just going to use this because I'm really. Um, confident with it and happy with Super Sculpey and it also takes paint really well okay you know one of the nice qualities I really like about Super Sculpey 
in this case Sculpey 3, is it carves beautifully. It not only sculpts nice, but it also carves beautifully. In this case, I'm using a number 11 blade, which I love to use because I can scrape and cut at the same time. But it's just, it's really hard, but when you cut it with a knife, it, it, it feels soft. So it has really beautiful properties. So if you build up too much, or you like to sculpt that way, where you add and subtract, then uh, I really like it. So I just want to show you how nice and easy this Super Sculpey cuts when it's been cured in the oven, and yet it's still rigid and hard. It just slices like almost like cheese. That's why I like it so much. And then if I want, I can just add a couple pieces, a couple blobs on each side here. You know, usually I'll just score it up and then add it in and then just work it in, knead it in. You don't really need to though. And then when you bake it, it just adheres perfectly. Like, like it's all one piece. Right? No glue needed, no uh, glaze or anything. It just... You know, I mean, you can use glaze with, uh, sorry, glaze with Super Sculpey. They have it, like an adhesive type, but I've never had to use it. I've added five or six layers in different areas, put this tail on that way. It just welded in when I put it in the oven. I just, you know, kneaded it in, and now it's, you know, like it's pretty solid, right? You know, and then when it's all done, I'll glaze it over to even put a hard sealer coat on it, but. Yeah, that's what I like about it. It's a really good way for novices to start. And I still consider myself a novice somewhat at sculpting. I just take longer to do things. <laughs> but I just patiently work away and uh, something good usually comes out, you know, that's okay. But Okay, so I just wanted to show you this, uh, you know, I'm still way deep in process here. Add, you know, sculpt, uh, cook, and, and carve. <laughs> anyway, it looks like a raccoon. <laughs> We've been having a lot of raccoons around the house lately. And uh, this goes to show you, right, you know, when your emotions are driving the, the you know, the sculpting tool, right? Uh, anyway, I'm just building up. I'll be carving back, but um, yeah, he looks like a raccoon. <laughs> Maybe I should do a raccoon diorama. <laughs> okay, so moving right along. So more layers. Now, what I'm doing now is, is like this basic shape, the proportions... And the physique, like the skin physique, if you took all, if you skin the bear, this is what they look like, right? They look like they don't look big and bulky like this. This is all fur, a lot of fur, probably four inches of fur all around on that guy. Uh, bears are all very uniquely different. We're just not used to looking at them. You know, we're used to looking at people. That's why we can judge things more better possibly. But let me just point out a couple things here. So I've been... Uh, building up layers, and this has been in the oven probably half a dozen times now. Probably more. Probably, oh, I don't know, maybe seven times now. And I'll tell you what I did. So, before I explain to you what I've just done here. So, this is all hard. The head now, this basic primary shape is, is pretty much where I want it. Um, except I haven't modeled the bottom jaw, right? I've, I've only modeled the upper part of the skull jaw. There's no lower jaw here because the lower jaw is going to be um, holding the fish, right? Like this kind of thing. So you won't really see the bottom jaw. It's going to be a big salmon hanging out of his mouth. Uh, so that's going to be modeled as a separate model, okay? Like it'll be probably 
about the length of this dowel like this hanging down. So that's a different part of the sculpture that I'll be dealing with later. Um, so the only soft clay on here is where my thumb and forefinger is. I've been bulking up and adding weight to the body now, sort of chasing the head because I got the proportions where I want them. Now I got to bulk up the bear because I need a thick, thicker coat here to do all the fur sculpt. And, you know, just the kind of shapes that you see like in these photos. So the head's all done. The eyes are drilled out. They'll be dealt, or I'll be using probably an acrylic dowel. A clear acrylic dowel probably for those. You can see the nose. What I did with the nose was, is, uh, this is all carved. So when I say sculpt, I mean model. Like to model means to take a clay-like substance, epoxy, putty, whatever, and you shape and mold the piece. It either air dries by two-part epoxy or whatever, or some hardener, or um, you can bake it like with super sculpy and it becomes like hard. Uh, not as hard as epoxy putty, but uh, I have models that have been all oh, that are over they're 20 years old and they're solid as can be. So that's why I use it. And besides, if you're uh, like depends on your style, like if you like to add or if you're worried about making mistakes, uh, I mentioned this earlier, you might want to try Super Sculpey because you can fix mistakes easy and you don't have to be in a hurry. You won't have any anxiety when you sculpt about, oh, I got to get going. It's not sticking or it's kicking off or whatever. But there's nothing wrong with epoxy uh, putty to sculpt with. A lot of the masters use it, and they do it for good reason. But I'd like to use Super Sculpey predominantly because I do mostly animals, so and it just works good with the larger bodies like this. Now, so this is all hard, right? So I carved the nose and the eyes, like all this, the ears and nose, but I actually attached the ears onto a hard head. And I baked it, like I worked it in, kneaded it in, like, and then I shaped them, pinched them up and shaped them. And then when they were, like, they were kind of blobs, right? And then when I baked it and they hardened, and then I just cut them into shape, okay? So a car is really nice, uh, super sculpting. That's what I like about it. So I was able to get the nose and the upper lips and this area done. So I'm going to leave that. And this is all baked off. The eyes, a little bit of the brow. And then when I do the sculpt on the hair and so on, then I'll build up a little bit more and just build in the character of the bear. So it's more um, distinct that way. But right now what I'm doing is you can see I'm bulking up. I'm adding about a sixteenth inch thick around and I'm going to bulk up and get it to the size that I want, which like I'll just show you the one that I'm this is kind of the one that I'm modeling it after here. Okay. Because this guy represents what I saw when I was fishing, when he was sort of ran out of the creek with the fish. And so he was the closest photo I could get to him. And, I, and he looks like a younger bear. So I'm after a bit of a younger bear and a black bear too, right? So, so I want that, I want to try to model that distinction, right? Like it's not just a generic bear, but an actual, you know, West Coast black bear. So you can see... Um, the influence is there. Good photos help, but it's a patient game too. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to do the same with um, the Super Sculpey, right? I'm going to roll it on. Like I put a blob on like here. I'll just show you how I do it. I think I pointed it out before. I usually just take a blob like this. Okay. And, uh, well, let's see, where do we want to add this? Well, let's, add, let's just put it in here. So I push it in. I knead it in. Good. Like, you just got to keep kneading it, and it'll grab. Once it warms up in your hands, it starts to get, it starts to stick really good to the baked section. Okay. And then I just pull it. See, now it's getting nice and warm, and it works really good in the hand. I got a... Uh, shop light here too that puts out a bit of heat so that helps okay and you can see that once you once it gets to the right sort of temperature of your hands it's beautiful to work with and so now i just feather that in and then what i do is is i like to sort of bread you know like a bread or a, a dough roller uh, with this i just roll it and feather it out 
and that assures that it bonds really good to the hardened Sculpey. And that way, um, it'll never flake off. Like, I have never really had problems with chunks ever falling off. Uh, if you're doing it in a, in, a, in a warm area and you do it this way, like, I never really had any problems. So that's another reason why I like Sculpey. You don't need to add, you know, their sticky... Like they sell product where you paint it on and then do it, but I've never had to use it. So, so that's what I'm going to do is I'm going to roll them up like that. I'm going to put some body weight on them now. You can see how he's changing now, right? First he looked like a raccoon, remember? <laughs> and then he looked like a wolf. <laughs> and he's going to look like a bear when he's done. Okay. Okay, so you can see the five. I got the five brass claws. I put the first one in close to center on the paw. And then I got a few drawings to work from. And then I'm, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to push the next one in. Okay, so I decided to uh, not use the drill method, as I mentioned. It's just uh, the Super Sculpey is great for, you know, bulkier uh, subjects like this. But when you get down to finer detail, it just breaks apart too easily compared to epoxy putty. And with epoxy putty, it's, it's pretty, it's got a really uh, nice stiffness to it. And so I can insert the brass claws and move them around in and out like adjust them, space them out, and uh, you know get them kind of the way I want them. And then I'll engrave the bottom of the foot and the pads later. So I'm just going to do each paw separately because I don't want to deform it. Like I don't want to kiss it or bump it when I'm doing this one here because they're kind of fiddly work and I want them to turn out nice because that's an important part. I don't want to hide the feet and brush so to speak because I'm too lazy to to model that part of the animal. So. And they'll go over well with the front paws too, so because you'll see them clearly. Okay, so a uh, little bit of super sculpey, a little bit of milliput, and possibly some plastic putty, uh, acrylic uh, at the end, just to tweak some things. Um, but we'll see. Okay. Okay, so um, I should mention this particular step here because if I don't, uh, I would probably kick myself <laughs> or be remiss, you know, because I've gone this far. And I wouldn't want something to happen to somebody if they've used super scalping and say, oh, you know, uh, how come you didn't mention that or whatever. So now with super Sculpey, uh, I've been using it for a long time. And um, there has been reports of, uh, of a type of bloom, they call it, that after you paint Super Sculpey, um, 
blemishes can appear or a type of bloom. Um, it's a type of anomaly that, that comes out of the, uh, the medium itself and, and causes a type of rash on the paint and that wouldn't, wouldn't be fun. So um, if that was to happen. So I've never had that problem personally over the years and I've always just sealed with like acrylic. But uh, what I'm gonna do is, is uh, like I picked this up, it's called Satin Glaze. It's to seal Super Sculpey, it's by Sculpey. Now here's the problem or here's the conundrum or whatever. <laughs> I think this here, like they won't tell you what it is on the back, um, you know, and all Vallejo does is say satin varnish, but it does at least say 100% acrylic resin. At least they say that. Sculpey doesn't say anything, so they just say satin glaze. Uh, stir gently, la da da, do not shake, apply glaze to baked clay with brush. So. I'm going to put this on this bear first before I paint it with Tamiya's and oils uh, to finish. So if something does go wrong, I'm going to blame Sculpey. <laughs> because, you know, what are they going to, you know, like, like if I ever get a bloom on this, you know, and that's when it'll happen on one of your favorite pieces, um, then I can blame them. But I bet you it's the same as this. I did my fish with this satin varnish, so... And this is just a satin varnish as well, but they say satin glaze. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm just going to paint this on with a nice clean brush. And then just uh, see how that works. Um, that way, you know, it's just nice to, you know, to just seal things up, right? So I'm just going to stab it in. Um, I don't want to lay it on super thick. I just want to get it into the fur engraving just to seal it and to harden it because that is presumably what it will do it will seal it and give it a bit of a uh, like, like harden things up a little bit okay Okay, time to paint the bear. So what I'm gonna do here is, is cover just a little bit of it. And I'm gonna show you that I have four colors that I'm gonna use. Flat, straight, black, XF1 by Tamiya. Just for all the, like for all the shadow. I'm gonna base it out mostly black. Because what you see here in this picture is not black really. Like if you're just to paint like this model black for sculpture, um, it's not going to look like that. Like, look at, it's, it's all gray. Like, this is gray. All this fur because the light's hitting it and it's rendering it gray. Yeah, so that's how you have to think when you paint. You got to think shadow, light. Right. And then the face here is going to be painted this color. This brown I'll be using for a top of the years, maybe a little bit, because black bears, like I've seen so many black bears in British Columbia here. Oh, and since I'm on the topic, because somebody mentioned, well, you know, your bear looks skinny or small. Well, he, well, he is. So here's a photo that really inspired it, because this is the kind of bears I see up here all the time. They're small. Like this bear is only about 350 pounds. So he's very, you know, like he's not, like he's probably a couple years old, three years old, but... A lot of the black bears in BC are not big, they're small. There's plenty of them, but they're not big. There are big black bears, believe me, I've seen them. But mostly I see small bears. And so that's the idea, and he's coming out of the water. So if you've seen a bear come out of the water, not this particular one, it's an older, larger bear. Uh, they look skinny, like they look like a husky human being. It's quite bizarre, really. Um, so, you know. There's the storybook version and then there's the reality. So I'm going to paint this flat black first. And then the other black that I'm going to go over top of it with is this here, which is, I put quite a bit of blue in this. This is like a tire black to me, but it has a sort of a hint of gray to it. Um, I don't know if you'll be able to tell if I show it to you, but um, 
you can see the difference between the two, right? See, the one on the left here has got the gray or the blue in it. If you add blue or green to black, uh, it'll it'll stay dark, but it'll it'll go to a type of gray, like a German gray or a rubber gray. Sometimes, if you add quite a bit of green to black, it looks cool because it has a kind it uh, reflects light differently, and it adds depth to black, which is hard to do because black is not an easy color to to paint. Like just the term black, like a black bear. Like how do you paint a black bear? Well, black is only the base coat. The rest is all highlights, right? So that's what I'm going to do is I'm just going to uh, spill paint all over my photograph here first. Um, I'm going to just basically base paint the whole bear black. Okay. You can see I carved the bottom of his paw there. Um, that's the only detail you see on that bottom paw. So I'm going to base him out black. And then uh, cut in a little bit of brown. Like I've seen literally like, like black bear is just sort of a general term like black bears are all kinds of colors like uh, they're cinnamon uh, they can be gray they can be brown mottled brown and black some are black with a silvery hint or, or uh, a red brown even like a real red cinnamon brown so oh well, that's cool I really like the way that texture turned out. Okay, phase two. So he's based out with this flat black. You can see uh, what you see on the on the nose or the muzzle or whatever is just the cell clay showing through. I've always liked the base color of that uh, fleshy tan colored um, super sculpy. It just, you know, allows you, like when you're painting it too, it, like it helps you to see maybe how you want to approach that. Because like it does vary, like here's one, an old guy, you know, you can see the tan on his nose and, you know, his forward uh, muzzle, a little bit under the chin there. and up in between the eyes there's a tan shade but then when you look at this guy here he's quite dark eh? but uh, what i'm going to do like the base color of of the nose of black bears like some would attribute it to almost like an orange color sometimes uh, what i'm going to do is i'm just going to uh, base it out with a combination of this uh, buff that i added some flesh to and then I'm going to use oil paint at the end, like put a dark, uh, you know, raw umber with some raw sienna or whatever, just to add a little reddish brown, like, because it's transparent. So I want to have the base color like this, which is going to change now when I paint this, but I want to paint everything. And then uh, I'll just blend that in later with oils. Because that's pretty much the distinction of a black bear in BC is, is, you know, they have that look just like that. They're black or, you know, highlighted gray or cinnamon colored, dark, dark cinnamon or brown or black or whatever. But And the nose is always very distinctly sort of pale, almost a flesh tone. So um, rather than change over my airbrush, I'm feeling kind of lazy. And... Uh, because I picked up a new airbrush, um, which I should probably let my <clears throat> subscribers know and those that contribute to the channel that donate sometimes. And I wanted to show them what I spent the money on. I picked up a Pache Talon airbrush made in USA.
but this one works pretty good too and if you want to cheat like uh tiny amounts uh, just crank the psi up on your compressor if you have the ability to do that okay so i'm just going to uh So you can always tell if it's not thin enough when it speckles, and I don't like that. That's why I really like thin paint, but we'll see. That's better. So not, uh, you know, another nice thing about a dual action is, is you can just juice it a couple times just to clean the tip, right? You can't do that with a single action even though you're almost using a dual action like a single action, but the ability to just blow it wide open for a second like that and lube up the tip um, is to an advantage when you're uh, cutting in color like this. I don't want to cover it totally. I want to let some of the black show through because when you put a oil wash in that, uh, it'll it'll reconcile um, some of those other filters or layers. Uh, probably should have got more black in there. Um, now that I think about it, but that's okay. Okay, so the next step I'm going to do with this black bear, since black fur is invariably um, almost always mute, you know, when you paint it, it's a difficult color to really paint with depth. So what I'm going to do is, um, this has already been um, airbrushed black and then a sort of a tinted black is I'm going to use these two colors. I'm going to dry brush. Uh, this is Payne's Gray. I really like Payne's Gray. It's a really, uh, well, it's a, it's a cooler gray. This here is a Portland Gray, which I won't use. That's a way off the spectrum. And then this other color is actually, of all things, it's this reclaimed color by Gamblin. They give you these for free when you go to an art supply store. Uh, if you buy a Gamblin color, they'll give you one of these for free if you ask for it. It's called Torrid Gray. You can see that the highlight is like this. That's Torrid Gray. And then the Payne's Gray over top of the black, which is in there as well. So, which is what this is, it's just not spread out. So that's what I'm going to do is I'm going to dry brush with Payne's Gray and then Torrid Gray and then call it done because it's, I mean, that's all you can really do. Okay, so I finished up the fur now and this is as far as I'm going to go with it because if you go anything more than this, it, uh, you lose the black feel and the lights are quite bright on it right now and I think it looks pretty good live. So I took a bit of Portland gray this here cream color almost but it's called portland gray so and there's Payne's gray in there and the other gray that i mentioned so i just use this to create a little bit of a highlight it's nice to stay in the gray range when you're doing this um, and i just lightly dry brushed Okay, the bear's getting close now, and um, I just want to show you how I do eyes on animals. It's just been my go-to practice for years. Um, 
for animals specifically. Uh, this is a uh, number 211 Evergreen 40 thou rod, and I rounded it off like a bullet on the end, see? So I'm going to paint these like this and then put gloss coat on, but I'm, when I cut them the right length and insert them, but I'll show you with this white piece so you can see it clearly. So what I do is, is I just drop it into the hole. The hole's a little bit oversized. Okay, that's how I do eyes. And then once it's in place, I just use a bit of acrylic clear. I don't put use any glue because acrylic, remember, is an adhesive. And so that's what I'll use because it'll just be glossy over the eye part. Or I can even use matte medium or, you know, um, any kind of clear drying acrylic, like even the Vallejo acrylic. So that's what I do, and I make up a few. Like with bears, their eyes are quite dark, uh, at least in my experience. And I've seen them up close and looked them right in the eyes. So they, they like depending on the light, they're usually a dark um, burnt umber with a bit of orange hue or, or hint to them. So I'd rather go darker than, than too light because then they'd get too Popeye look. So yeah, so that's all I'll do it. So this one here I'll use to cut to size. It helps to drill the hole just a little bit larger than 40 thou because you don't want them to fit tight because if you make them fit tight and it goes in and you push it in, let's say and it goes in too far, well, you're gonna probably mangle it or won't be able to get it out, right? So you want it so that you can pop it out because the clear acrylic will fill the gap, like you won't see it. And you want a gap because the light will go in and reflect off it, okay?